Si quieres ver el mismo vídeo en español, algo por polsku, or in other languages, mira la descripción abajo. Konnichiwa. Today we will talk about the basics of pronunciation in foreign languages. We will start with the fact that the Japanese have problems with our English letters R and L. That is, it is difficult for them to distinguish the words like rock and lock. But the strangest thing is that they actually can pronounce these sounds, more or less. Take a look at this passage. When I listen to it, I can hear sometimes something similar to our English R and sometimes something similar to the English L. We English speakers are not better. Now, let's have a look at an equivalent problem that we English speakers might have when learning foreign languages. Let's think about our English letter T and the sound that it represents. Now I'm going to pronounce two words in English that contain the letter T. Tell me what's the difference between these two T's. Tank, star, tank, star. It might be difficult. For us, it's the same T, but I have pronounced the two T's differently. During the pronunciation of the tank, I released some air from my mouth, but not during star. It is slight, but visible. This flow of air is called aspiration. In the word star, I pronounce the T without aspiration. The strange symbols that I use here in the International Phonetic Alphabet refer to these sounds. In the future, we will talk more about this alphabet for sure. Now, to see how these two T's differ, let's try to swap the T's in both words. First, tank with unaspirated T. Tank, tank. And star with aspirated T. Star, star. Both words start to sound a bit weird, but they are still comprehensible. But, in some languages, such switching might actually change the meaning. Now we'll jump into such a language. For Koreans, our English letter T doesn't always sound the same. For them, English T sometimes sounds as their T, and sometimes as their T. Even though we do pronounce both T's in English, it's still super difficult for us to detect this difference in Korean. But for native Korean speakers, it makes a huge difference. Have a look at these two Korean words. Tol, 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 tol means mask. Tol means daughter. I want you to smile today. Let's think about it. We can distinguish the Korean T's in a similar way the Japanese can't distinguish our English R and L. Okay, let's leave the aspiration behind for now. The most important thing is that a foreigner like me might pronounce the word tank as tank and I will still be understood by the native English speakers, more or less. This will not happen if I use F instead of T, that is, if I say fank. Cool, having these examples, we can finally loosely define some new concepts that are super useful when learning foreign languages. The first of these concepts is so-called minimal pair. A minimal pair in a given language is simply two words that are differentiated by a single sound. This small difference causes one word to change to another. A minimal pair in English is, for example, already mentioned rock and lock. In Korean, a minimal pair is, for example, tol and tol. Here are more examples of minimal pairs in English. Red, sad, sad, head, head, bad, bad, dead, dead, fed, fed, tad, tad, net, net, wet, wet, lead. Okay, the second concept we talk about is phoneme. A phoneme is an abstract unit of sound in a given language. Changing the phoneme in a word changes the meaning of the word or makes it unintelligible. It is the minimal pair that we have just defined that helps us to detect these entities. For example, by replacing only one sound in English, that is R with L in the word rock, we get the correct English word with a different meaning, lock. This means that the sounds corresponding to the letters R and L in these words represent different phonemes in English. A phoneme is not always equivalent to a letter, especially in English. For example, in English, the phoneme the is usually written with two letters. It is worse. Sometimes a letter represents one or another phoneme in English. For example, the letter G sometimes represents G as in good, or sometimes J as in gymnast. And the apparatus has collapsed. Phonemes and writing are two separate things. In fact, we can study phonemes of a given language even if that language has no writing. Now let's define the last concept of this video. We will take a look at allophones. Allophone is one of the possible pronunciations of a phoneme. For example, 
In English, I can pronounce the phoneme D in at least two different ways, aspirated or unaspirated, without changing the meaning of the word. This indicates that T and D are allophones of the same phoneme in English, but in Korean, these two sounds are pronunciations of two different phonemes, because by changing the T to D in TAL, we get a legitimate word that has another meaning, TAL. Thus, we learned some of the most important concepts in phonology. These concepts are actually quite difficult, because they don't have a strict definition that everyone agrees with. After all, linguistics is not as strict as mathematics, unfortunately. Okay, but why do we really need these concepts? Allophone, phoneme, minimal pair? Well, they are important not only because we are going to use them in the next videos, they are useful when we learn foreign languages. For example, if you want to understand the pronunciation of a foreign language, there is nothing better than finding dozens of minimal pairs of that language. Then we can try to distinguish the words of these pairs when pronounced by a native speaker of that language. Or even better, we can record ourselves when we try to pronounce these words. This is quite embarrassing at first, but useful. From my own experience and that of my friends, I know that even adults can learn very weird sounds from very exotic languages. And here we come. That would be it for today. If you're interested in my foreign language learning methods, there are some links and videos below. For now, I encourage you to subscribe and see you soon. Sayonara!